Welcome to Bidayet's inspiration series, where we hear from industry movers and shakers to learn about their professional journeys and get motivated by their career advice. I am Yasmin Shahata, and I am your host and moderator. Today, we are with Amr Azzeddin of Temple Management, a creative agency and talent management company. Amr, it's so great to have you with us. Thank you for having me. We'd like to start by learning a bit about your background and how you started on this journey. Okay, so basically, uh, I started as an architect. I studied architecture in Milan. And uh, while I was studying architecture, I was just doing some photography work uh, for fun as a hobby and sometimes to make just some extra money while I'm studying. I was helping like uh, models friends of mine who wanted to apply to agencies, things like that. And after I finished uh, my bachelor, uh, I started an architecture studio, me and friends of mine. We were mainly doing exhibitions and like uh, works that is like lightweight structures, as you can see. It. And uh, we actually needed during that time to do like document our work and do different kind of things. So when we did that, uh, I decided to like, oh, why not like make also like a master's in photography with communication while I like it can help in my field. Mm -hmm. And I started my master's in Milan as well while, while working as an architect. It was like for about one year, one and a half year. And during my master's, I actually couldn't attend much. It was like very difficult between work and studying. But then I decided to kind of like, okay, take one month that try to focus on what's happening, study it, try to get it right at least to finish it. And there where I like, uh, it really hit me that, okay, it's actually what I like. Yeah. And it's uh, started to change my life because it's, uh, it's mainly because I found people that could push me and support me and told me that you have a gift. So this is where you should proceed to do it. And uh, I like, this is how it started. And after that, I was parallelly doing both as an architect. And I made also like a, a sub company called Animal Wall, which was mainly doing like photography and video and things like that. Okay, so you're a busy man, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, I mean, it gets busier. <laughs> yes, I'm sure. So on this journey, was there somebody who you felt was like a role model or a mentor that you looked up to that kind of guided you to where you wanted to go? Yes, definitely. Actually, when I like decided to attend the classes in the masters, uh, there were two very interesting like uh, courses that were very, like were kind of attractive to me. One of them was called Art Direction, and actually it wasn't really a course of mine, but was of the fashion. And by chance, I was passing by and I like heard them speaking. It was interesting, so I went inside as a professor if I can attend just without getting credit or whatever. They told me yes, sure. And I did it, and the other one was called fashion photography, which was uh, Stefano Babic. He's, uh, like, he's a really good photographer. He was like one of the best. He did all the Gianfranco Ferre campaigns. Wow. Uh, and when I attended the class the first time, he actually didn't let me in. He told me, no, you cannot <laughs> enter like from the middle of the season. You have to like leave and come back next year or whatever. I couldn't do that for sure. So I tried to prove myself to him. So I kept sending him my pictures, my portfolio, what I do. Tell him, okay, give me a chance. Let me do just when you want course, take pictures. And then in the end, he agreed to give me that chance. And after that, since then, he actually became my mentor. Like, uh, he told me, okay, like, I think you should really pursue your career in photography. You have a gift. And when you shoot your first Vogue cover, send me a copy. And this was like when I first met him. And uh, until now, he's like still a guy that I look back for and like ask him for advices and things like that. Him and Alessandro Turci, which was the art direction class. Amazing. And both keeps pushing me. Like uh, I was thanks to actually Alessandro Turci also that I like pursued this career because I did with him a project uh, that was a fashion film. And the fashion film was actually about what's wrong with fashion, it was anti-fashion. I wasn't into fashion that time. And uh, he told me that you should submit this to festivals. And I didn't want to, I didn't think it was good enough. And he actually sent it to the Milan Fashion Film Festival and it got nominations and things like that. And this is where it all started, actually. It was in the closing ceremony of the festival where I met like uh, editors of ID magazine and I met like people from Vogue Italia and started doing collaborations with young brands. It was like Senso Vino 6 was a very cool brand. We started working together. And all this, I was still doing architecture, by the way. Wow, yeah. 
still like at some point I had to choose where to go and like even I'm still doing well in architecture but I choose to pursue the other path in media which was more interesting for me. That's great, that's great. And when you decided to pursue uh, the media side, what was your vision or your mission for, for your company? Well, at the beginning, I wouldn't really call it a company. When we started Animal Wall, it was more of a collective of three people, with uh, me as a photographer and director, and a uh, filmmaker, who was Spanish, Sergi, and Emre was sound designer. So the three of us were creating this kind of like audio-visual kind of productions, and we were doing like photos and videos. At that time, also, videos wasn't that strong in fashion. It was still like, you didn't really need video. Videos are secondary. You do the photos and then someone doing the video in the back. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But then like, uh, we started doing differently. We started doing a lot of editorials, things like that. And it gave us a bit of a buzz in like the video part. And uh, like, yeah, like after that, like uh, it was just, it kept growing, you know. But this is what was like just my Italy part, you know. And since, especially in your case, because you're involved in so many different, it seems like, you know, there's Animal Wall, there's a talent agency, there's the creative studios. Like, how do you juggle it all? Like, are you personally involved in everything or do you delegate? Like, how do you, how do you manage all this? Uh, well, I don't sleep. <laughs> yeah. <okay. laughs> but uh, actually, Animal Wall doesn't exist anymore or it exists as a brand name. But uh, like it's not the team anymore, so it can say Animal Wall evolved to temple management. Okay. So when I decided to like move to the Middle East and start working in the Middle East, and it was thanks to COVID actually, but it was kind of a, like a wake up call and it was interesting. It actually felt that I'm more happy with what I'm doing in the Middle East than what I'm doing in Europe. You know, it represents me more, and like the market is mature, so it's like it's, uh, it's still that it's like there's so many things you can develop and do. So temple management became like uh, yeah, the hub for many different things. Mm -hmm. And like, I started, I built a completely new team. I still work with my colleagues in Italy and in Paris, but it was mainly that, okay, I'm focusing on the Middle East. So I built it like in Cairo and in Dubai. And I, like, we made a team over there and a team in Cairo, and we started working on something that has a mission to elevate the fashion productions in the Middle East in general and have like, kind of the best of the best of the Middle Eastern talents under one uh, roof that could like, you know, push this further. So we started like uh, contacting different photographers, filmmakers, things like that. And we want to represent you in temple. And basically we are looking for the people who represent the culture in a good way, in a different way, in something like this. Mm -hmm. We're not looking to be Westernized. We want to actually like, okay, get our experience from what we did in Europe and bring it here and try to elevate it better. And this was the time where mainly like all the, like the Middle East was mainly like when you see fashion editorials in the magazines and stuff, it was still very Western. So we tried to bring that more to the culture. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, like coming back to your question of how I manage it, it's like, uh, yeah, I really don't know. I mean, it's, it's well, just- Well, give <laughs> us like an insight. What's like a day in your life? Like what would we see if we were shadowing you for a day in your life? Uh, I mean, I have to say that like, yeah, running a company, it affected a bit my creative side. So I don't shoot as much as I used to, mm -hmm. uh, which is a downside of it. But the good side of it that you feel that you're doing something different is not just about you. It's about everyone else. Yeah. So my day is basically that it's in between yeah, I start with emails and <laughs> in the morning with lots of emails in the morning. And uh, I don't always go to the office. Sometimes I go, sometimes not. Our team is basically everywhere. We have people uh, here, Dubai, Berlin, Saudi. So it's, we don't really have a specific office. We have office, but we don't really go to. So yeah. we always like online meetings and things like that is what we do. So we do that and follow up with everyone about what we're doing, things like that, negotiations. Specifically in the talent management part, it, takes a lot of time of like, you know, dealing with contracts and negotiations and this kind of things. And thanks to my architecture background, it gives you a bit of a like business side, let's say, and look at things differently. So it's not just about like uh, doing something that's artistic, but also how to formulate it to be functional. So this is how it's like, for me it works. So I'm also, I'm kind of, I have OCD for like technicalities and things like that when I see it. Even though I'm an artistic person, but still a few things, it, it really triggers me. 
So I follow up with everyone in the agency, we do that, and then when we have a shoot, like, yeah, we are all on set or someone does something different, things like that. So, yes, I mean, it just keeps going, but we don't have, like, uh, working hours, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, we can start midday, early day, finish late night, finish next morning, so... Yeah, well, as an entrepreneur, you're probably working 24 hours anyway, right? Yeah, yeah. basically. <laughs> So on this, on, this, on this incredible journey and going from Italy to Egypt, what have been, and with all, everything happening in the world too in the last few years, what has been like the biggest challenge for you? I mean, when COVID hit, it was really shocking. It was shocking because of, uh, I had really big plans for 2020. It was like, uh, and 2019 was going so well for me. And uh, I secured some contracts in New York, uh, like it was my first time going there, starting to work and was waiting for my visa. And then like COVID came, so obviously no visa, no New York, <laughs> which just turned out well because then Temple came. So it's, yeah. Yeah, everything happens for a reason. Yes. But, uh, but yeah, I was stuck in Amsterdam for six months and basically it was just because it was like a connecting flight. So I wasn't even supposed to go to Amsterdam and ended up staying there six months doing nothing, so I was just like, yeah, think about everything we have to do. And at that time, I was starting a new magazine, actually. It's called Divas Magazine, Divas of Arabia. And the magazine had a mission, like, which was also to kind of feature all the good talents and artists that we have in the Middle East, whether it's in fashion, culture, or arts. And we were supposed to launch in 2020 the print issue, and then didn't make any sense. We didn't even have the funds for it anymore because all the sponsors backed out and things like this, so it was like, Okay, we shot it already, we have all the things, let's launch it digitally. Everyone's sitting at home, wants to see yeah, things. Yeah, and... it's a great idea. Yeah, and this was how we did it. We launched it digitally and I was just working on that. Actually, it was good. I was focusing on the magazine because I didn't have anything else to do. And we started doing articles, featuring people, talking to people, things like that. I, I made network all over the world of like mainly Arab artists who like wants to do something special for the Middle East. We were getting submissions, things like that. And then this platform kept running. But of course, all of that was like, almost we had no profit out of it. So we we're making any money. So for a really big time, we were like completely stuck. And then suddenly, like uh, it started popping up again by itself. So it was challenging at the beginning. But anyway, we didn't stop. We just found something else to do. And actually it helped us also to do something else. And then it came the Vogue cover with uh, Hint Sabri which was a really interesting time because, yeah, it's like we wanted to do something that speaks about what's happening now. And we also, it, it had a lot of topics about like post-COVID and like the issues with like sexual harassments in the Middle East, things like that. And we tackled all this in this cover and was kind of, a, okay, it's a new season, it's a new beginning, it was something different. And then like, from now on, like, yeah, we started the company from Temple, started from here. And then we moved from Temple, like from Cairo, we started going to Dubai and we did another branch in Dubai. And it started expanding and everything was working together, like Temple, Divas, Animal Wall, everything, you know. Well, yeah. That's it. yeah, no, I think the key is perseverance. In the past few years, there's been a big focus and stress on more representation and diversity, both behind the camera and in front of the camera. How have you experienced that? in your field and your career? And how has it, has it benefited you or has it been a struggle to find these diverse talents? Well, I actually have a good story for that uh, as a good example, let's say. Because uh, when I was working in Italy, as I started, it was actually quite difficult. But something very interesting happened is that uh, there is an Egyptian-Italian singer called Mahmoud who, uh, who was like a Eurovision like winner or something like this. Uh, and then he became very famous in Italy and then they wanted to make the cover of Esquire magazine. And for this, they wanted an Egyptian photographer to shoot it. So they make like this Egyptian Italian one and like an Egyptian photographer. So it's like a, a diversity and a new generation and this kind of things happening, you know. So they called me and they told me like, yeah, we want you to come to Milan and shoot this story mm -hmm. and uh, in like in their whole like history they never had like an Egyptian and Arab shooting a cover for them you know wow so they came and he told me like and you have full creative freedom that's great do whatever you want so I was in Egypt at that time by chance so I went to Khan al-Khalili 
I started collecting old movie posters, things like that. And like, you know, I just wanted to make it as much as possible that this is like an Egyptian Arab <laughs> shoot. <laughs> and I'm going to put, put it in, in the pictures. <laughs> yeah, it was like Arab and writing, set design and everything. And we're going to bring carpets and like, yes, I will make it like as cliche as possible yeah, yeah. to say that, okay, like we did it, you know. So, and yeah, we went there and they were very happy with the result. They didn't say anything. They actually let me do everything as I wanted to. And, uh, and yeah, and after that, like, yeah, they just got the selection and the cover was out and was like actually one of the best selling covers for them, you know, and they, they even thanked me a lot for it. And, uh, and since this was, I think, uh, 2019 or 2018, mm -hmm. end, the end of 2018. Mm -hmm. And after that, like, yeah, I went back to Paris and I was like staying there for a while. I started working a bit. Uh, of course, there is always a language barrier. In Italy, it was easier for me because I speak the language, things like that. And some, some, sometimes people don't know if I'm Italian or Egyptian. You know? Yeah, yeah. So, but in, uh, I don't speak French, so in France, it was even more difficult for me. So I was working mainly with international clients in Paris, mm -hmm. rather than the French ones. And I signed with agencies over there to represent me. But I always noticed that I wasn't always the first choice when they are like sending the photographers and things like that. So like, yeah, I started to go on my own. And slowly there was some change happening, you know, you can feel it slowly. When did you start feeling that shift and start feeling that you were getting more opportunities? It's actually in 2020, after COVID. Uh, I think this is a time where like this discussion became more legit, let's say. People had time to more think about that and like everyone stopped working basically. So let's think what's going to happen next, you know. So and it was funny because it was like the time where like I moved to the Middle East and then I started getting more jobs in Europe. So I was traveling a lot back in Europe to do like, like photo shoots and like videos and stuff like that. And at that time I started to shift more from photography to directing. I was focusing more on video. Mm -hmm. So I had a lot of like productions, which was mainly about directing campaigns and ads and editorials and things like that. Uh, but it's always ups and downs. So it's kind of, uh, it's still a trendy thing. Diversity is not really something that it's, Okay, we have it, we acknowledge it, everything. So, yeah, sometimes it's working, sometimes not. I feel, for example, like uh, the past year, maybe in, in the middle, they kind of, uh, I don't know, like felt that they got bored of diversity. So let's skip it for a while and then go back to diversity. So it's always like that. So you never know because in the fashion world, like some people really believe it, some not, but they have to do it. So Yeah, yeah, there's yes, some political still, pressure. It's, it's yeah. good that it's like happening even if it's like a little bit happening, you know? Yeah, yeah. But since you've worked in both Europe and the Middle East, where do you think the opportunities are now? Definitely Middle East. Really? Yeah. I mean, yeah, for me, Middle East is the future. Like, uh, Europe is, is like, actually the reason I moved from Milan to Paris is because I reached this point in Milan that, okay, I don't think really I can go further. So I need to go somewhere else to see what I can do. And then you move to Paris and then next step you move to New York. It's always a cycle for like fashion photographer success, you know. Mm -hmm. But then when you move to New York, you're commercial, you can go back to work in Paris. You know, there is always this thing. But uh, right now, uh, everyone is focusing on the Middle East. Like even the brands, they're more interested to work with me because of the Middle East. And, yeah. they, and they see like also my work. We did like, uh, like three years ago or something when I came like, to, uh, like 2020 or like end of 2019 was my first project in the Middle East. And we did a Dolce & Gabbana shoot and was like a beauty shoot and was in an area in like old Dubai that was being like restored, and they didn't open it yet. So it was completely empty and we shot it over there. And it was like the first like Middle East shoot you can say that is like for an international brand that is actually like Arab environment and you know, you had people talking in Arabic and you had like, uh, like the Adhan in the background and things like that. So, and from when this came out, I started getting a lot of requests from international clients that, okay, we want to do this as well, you know? Like yeah. we want things that are like localized more and people can feel it more and things like this. And uh, yes, yeah, so this is where it started. And I think that, yeah, Middle East, everyone now wants to be in the Middle East. Yeah, no, I think, I think you're right. The Middle East is booming and definitely brands realize now that localizing content is more effective marketing to that, to the certain markets when it's more relatable. But for, for young people who want to break into your industry and um, 
that might face some of these challenges, what advice would you give them in their big careers? Uh, my main advice is that like never give up because it's like uh, you'll always face difficulties in anything you do, always. And no one will ever like uh, support you unless they see something that really have a potential in you and that you really doing something that needs to be seen and needs to be shown to people and you have something to say and you have something different you believe in and things like that. So my advice is just like keep going no matter what. And anyway, it will come whether it's success, money or whatever you're looking for, it will come. And like just you don't have to think about it at the beginning, just believe in what you're doing and trust me it will work. So let's talk about the future. Give me a, an idea of where you want to be let's say in five, five years, years <laughs> 10 years, 20 years, what is the ultimate, ultimate goal or vision for you? Um, I mean, like, I know this question, like, uh, yeah, I heard it a lot and thought about it a lot, but from my experience, nothing ever works out the way you plan it, you know? Yes. So, I mean, like five years ago, if you tell me where would you be, and I was an architect, so I, I never thought I would be where I am now. Uh, but of course, like, yes, I mean, I have, I have a lot of ideas in my mind and things, and I'm also, I'm working on actually opening new companies now with other people that were working, things that are related to music and things that are related to arts and NFT and things like that. So basically, like, yeah, you just try to evolve from where you are and see where it leads you. But where do you think your industry is going? Like, where do you think is the future? Are you really going to, do you think the NFT side is going to really boom or do you see the more traditional uh, uh No, not platforms? necessarily NFT, but the fact that everything is digitalizing, that's for sure. Like, there is no running away from that, you know, with the metaverse and everything. It's like, yeah, this is the future for sure. Yeah. Uh, like what you can like usually if we are thinking the traditional ways of like a picture or something like this i think somehow it will always be there but in a different way like it always finds its ways to do it you know i think there will be like maybe galleries in the metaverse that shows photography and people will go buy them you know like uh, i don't know i'm just saying but it could be like as photography for example like uh, in the past two three years it returned back to film to shoot on film you know because mm -hmm. it's something that you wanted to add a meaning to it so, so many digital pictures have been meaningless. I just click, 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 and there's nothing. So if I shoot on film, then I stop, I take my time, I think of the picture, and then it has a meaning for me because every frame I take counts. It costs a lot of money to shoot on film. So even me, I shoot mainly on film. I, like, I rarely shoot on digital unless it's just like a commercial thing that needs a lot of pictures. But uh, so you always find the way around it, you know? But anyway, like you have to be open that, yeah things are going to be, the future is coming and yeah, you'll have to deal with the digital world. Find a way to be in it, whatever it is. Yeah, so I think then some key takeaways from your journey is resilience, to be very resilient, to be adaptable <laughs> to what the future may bring and where your passion takes you and determination, hard work, anything else that we'd like to add here? Consistency, I would say. Consistency, very important, yeah. Yeah. I think it's the most important one, you know. Yeah. Thank you so much, Amr. This has been really great talking to you and so inspiring, and I'm sure so many people are going to learn from this conversation. I hope so. Thank you for having me. Thank you. And to hear from other movers and shakers in the industries, please go to Bidayet's YouTube channel or www.bidayet.com.